I honestly can't remember the last time I banned someone from my roleplay group. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about handling rule breakers. We talked about a year ago about the rules that I think should be implemented into a group roleplay, so I'll make sure that that particular video is linked up in the card. If you haven't watched it, I do recommend going and watching that before watching this video because it will give you a lot of context for what I consider important as far as rules that groups should have. Alright, so go do that and then come back to this video. Alright, welcome back. Okay, so before we get into it, something I want to note is that rules are guidelines. This is a social collaborative hobby, and that means rules should not be enforced equally. All rules will need to be enforced differently depending on who exactly you're talking to and how they broke the rule. Now I know this makes the whole thing a lot more complicated, but don't worry, we're going to break it down. Tip number one, make sure everyone knows the rules. Depending on the size and the scope of your game, exactly how you enforce this may vary. I'm going to give two different examples. My roleplay group is very small. We will never have more than 30 members, and typically we have more like 15 members. Also in my game, you have to apply for a character. So what this means is typically that you take time investing in that character, asking questions, working through building that character with my mods in a lot of cases, so you're really invested by the time you actually join and start roleplaying. The rules are there, they're the very first thing that you see when you look at the important information about the roleplay, but because you have to do so much investment to join the roleplay in the first place, I don't do anything that forces you to read them. Think about it this way, you spent that much time applying and getting in, likely you read the rules and you know what they are. Now in my Discord server that's connected to this channel, that is not the case. In that server, lurking is fine. Lots of people join and just lurk and read the things that are going on there, and that's totally cool. So for that server, what I do is I make you emoji the rules before you join. I do this with a bot since it's a Discord server. And my server is linked down below if you want to join it, you can see exactly how that works. So when deciding how to communicate, making sure everyone knows the rules, how large your server is should be taken into account. And a big piece here is mods must follow your rules. I'm also going to link my leadership video up in the card because having your mods follow your rules is critical to making sure that step number one is followed, that everyone knows the rules, because if your mods aren't following them, people aren't going to understand your rules. And that brings us to tip number two. Don't ignore it when someone breaks a rule. Now, this doesn't mean you need to hand out a warning or a ban every single time someone breaks a rule, but if it's in your rules and it gets broken, you need to take some kind of action. We're going to talk about what action to take just a little bit later. If you have a rule in your game, and your players see someone breaking that rule regularly, I can guarantee you they're all going to start breaking the rules, because you have communicated that your rules do not matter. So that means when you see someone breaking a rule, do something. That also means you need to think deeply about what is really important on your server and what your rules should be. If you don't care about something enough to enforce it, why is it in your rules? Alright, so that's my first two tips. On to tip number three. Investigate. When someone breaks a rule, find out exactly what happened. Get chat logs, get screenshots, don't assume that just because someone says something happens, that's exactly what happened. If someone messages you and says, hey, this player did this, that, and the other, ask for receipts. People love to pass on hearsay for their own personal reasons or out of pure ignorance. So don't assume everyone's telling the full story. Every time someone tells a story, that story is filtered through their own biases, and we all have biases, myself included. So go get the receipts yourself. Also, ask questions. If the offending party said something they shouldn't have said, ask them, hey, what do you mean by that? If the offending party did something wrong, ask them, why did you do that? Sometimes things aren't always what you think they are, because again, we all have biases. Make sure also you're not the only one investigating. Ask your mods for help, show them the situation and say, hey, what do you guys think? I know when something that really gets to me happens, it's really helpful to go to my mods and say, hey, am I overreacting to this? And they can help me make sure that I'm not making a knee-jerk reaction or response to the rule breaker. 
Keep in mind, sometimes people break rules because they just don't know. Sometimes they disagree with your rules and that's why they're breaking them. Sometimes they're legitimately trolling you and trying to push boundaries. But you need to know exactly what is happening before you take any action. All right, so now you're armed with my three main tips. One, make sure everyone knows the rules. Two, don't ignore rule breakers. And three, investigate rule breaking situations. Now, what exactly do you do with rule breakers? We have a few choices, so we're going to discuss the softest to hardest approach. Approach number one, talk to them and ask them to change the behavior. This works the majority of the time, and it's what I recommend for majority of situations. If the offenses aren't a big deal or you're talking to somebody that's been in your game for a long time, just talk to them and ask them for the change. You're going to talk to them when you're investigating anyway, so just keep that conversation going and ask them, hey, please don't do that again. I'll give an example. I don't allow in my server for people to get too personal in the over 18 section. I don't want to see people going into gory detail about their sex life. I don't want to see people flirting. So when I see someone doing it, I'll usually address them publicly because I don't think it's a big deal. And this is the type of thing that I'll type out to them. Hey, we don't allow flirting here on this server because it's a public space. And if we allow flirting, it will attract people who will come here to harass others. Because as most of you know, roleplay attracts a lot of creeps. It, it does. And I don't want my spaces to attract them. So no flirting, no talking about what you like in bed, none of that stuff. All right? And this is not designed to shame anyone. If your goal is to use a bit of social humiliation to prevent someone from repeating a behavior, stop. Shame will change behavior, but it doesn't teach anyone anything. So I believe that shame does not create a good community. It creates an anxious community. When I make these requests, I'm just asking for a change. I'm not saying they have to, I'm not threatening, I'm not even giving a warning, and plus I'm explaining why. Most of the time, people will just say, sure, and they'll do it. And that works in almost every situation, and truthfully, that's what I do vast majority of the time. All right, so that's the softest approach. Let's talk about approach number two. This is message them privately. This is basically the same thing as approach number one, but I'm doing it privately so not everyone in the server is going to see it. So there's basically two situations where I'm going to do this messaging them. One, the person keeps breaking the rule over and over, so you need a more in-depth conversation. Or two, this is someone that's been in your game for a while, but they've never really broken a rule before. I say this because I've found in these situations, a lot of time the issue is something crazy going on in their real life. So like maybe this person's been totally fine in your game for the past year, but all of a sudden they've gone off the rails. In those situations, I found a DM can be useful because they will give you more information on what's actually going on so you can make a proper assessment. Otherwise, this is exactly the same as approach number one. All right, we're going to get a little bit harder now. Approach number three, issue an official warning. For this, you need to tell them it's a formal warning, and you also need to make sure that they understand this is not something that's open for conversation or discussion. Typically, when I need to do something like this, if it's public, I'll just have, you know, so-and-so is getting a warning for, and then like one sentence on whatever it is that they did. If it's private, I imagine it like I'm writing a customer service email. I start with hi and their name, and then I'll explain that they're getting a warning and exactly why they're getting a warning. You always still need to include the why, of course, and then I'll end it with a thank you because that's typically how I sign emails. In this situation, the decision has already been made by the mods for one reason or another. There is no discussion, there's no conversation, nothing like that. I only do this for specific violations or for serious violations where approach number one and two are not appropriate for some reason or another. So basically what I'm saying is I pretty much never do this. I really just do it for activity checks and that's kind of it. If approach one or two isn't going to work, I pretty much always will skip to approach number four. This is what I call the timeout method. Depending on the platform, this may involve muting them so that they can't talk. This may involve kicking them, but not necessarily banning them so like they can come back after their timeout or something of that nature. Adjust to your platform. This is for serious or repeated rule violations. For example, someone comes into your server and is just breaking rules to try to push you. You've done your investigation, you've determined in this particular case, they're not just misunderstanding rules, they're literally trying to break rules because they want to push you and they want to push boundaries and that's just what they do on the internet. This is a hobby that we're all doing for fun. 
If that's truly the situation that's happening, don't waste your time with them. Just kick them. I found in some of these situations, sometimes I kick people and they come back perfectly well behaved. But if they come back and they have a little freak out or they continue the rule breaking behavior, we move on to approach number five. This is banning. I only use this in very specific situations. For example, someone breaks a rule over and over and they just won't stop. Or maybe they're doing something that could seriously get you or your other players in trouble. For example, if you tell me that you're over 18 and you're not, you get a ban. No ifs, ands, or buts, I am not going to get involved in that situation. I almost never ban people, really I don't. Because I largely use that approach number one where I'm just talking to people and requesting that they make a change, most people just say yes and they do it. Most people really don't want to upset the person running their whole roleplay for them that they're hopefully having fun in. I honestly can't remember the last time I banned someone from my roleplay group. So those are my tips for handling rule breakers. I, I feel like this one was a little bit long for the videos that I typically make, but I do still have more I could say on it. So let me know down below what questions you have in regard to rule breakers so I know what to focus on in those future videos.